Dimensional people, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we'll be doing a story time and a hotel review. That's right, a hotel review. If you've seen my recent travel vlogs, you would have known that I had some challenges on my most recent vacation. And now today we're going to talk about those challenges in addition to some other things that occurred while I was on that property. The name of the resort that I stayed at was the Royal to Cameron Montego Beach in Montego Bay. Okay, this resort I booked through a travel agency and based on a recommendation from my cousin. So the travel agent that I use is a, you know, is someone that my cousin has used in the past for like her other bookings. So she sent us a list. I think there was about four hotels that were on the list one of which I stayed at before so I was like okay let's try you know some other places um so I asked my cousin if she knew anything about the other locations and two of them she wasn't familiar with but the Royal de Cameron she mentioned that she stayed there before and she enjoyed it she said it wasn't a five-star resort but she enjoyed it okay when I travel I'm not fussy that I need a five-star hotel as long as my accommodation is clean, the food is good, I'm good. Okay, so I went there knowing it wasn't a five-star resort. But what I was met with, I did not expect. So on arrival, I got there. The property was beautiful. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> and then I got to my room and I was like, oh, okay. If you've seen in my video clips, I didn't show much of the rooms because the rooms were as basic as a hotel room would get. Okay, there was nothing to show off about those rooms. I might be looking down because I made some notes. Like I mentioned, it's a lot. So continuing on with the rooms, I got to my friend's room and I walked in their bathroom and I noticed that their shower curtain was like falling off the hook. It was torn and I was like, okay, so housekeeping didn't know they needed to change this or were they told that they shouldn't change it like I don't know what's going on but anyways the shower curtains were falling off later that night so the very first night this is when I found the leak in my room so we went to dinner dinner was really good that was the best meal we had on the property okay and that was only the one night I was there for four days and three nights just to give you context of what I'm talking about so after dinner the first night it started pouring we were exhausted so we all went back to our rooms and we slept so when I woke up it was somewhere around like 11 or close to midnight I woke up and I got to the bathroom and I was like oh you know like there's water falling on me so I was like where's this coming from so I started looking you know up on the ceiling and I realized that there was a leak my friend and I we headed back downstairs that night just to go and you know continue checking out the property so that very night is when I reported it to the front desk. I said to them, I said, it's late. I'm not going to be in my room right now, so we can deal with this tomorrow. The next morning, before breakfast, I went back to the front desk and I reminded them about the leak in my room. She told me that she's going to send the maintenance guy. If he needs to get access to my room, they would call me. Nobody called me, so I was under the impression that everything was sorted out and it was fixed. I was out of my room for majority of that day because that's the day we attempted to go rafting. Rafting didn't occur. We got back to the property. We just hung out on the beach for a bit and we had dinner reservations that night. So I quickly just got back to my room, you know, got myself ready for dinner and I headed back out. So after dinner, I got back to my room and I noticed that the leak was still there and I was like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. So I mentioned it again to the front desk because, you know, they said, if the maintenance guy needed to enter my room, they would call me, but no one called me. So why is there still a leak in my room? Anyways, the next morning is when, you know, I was like, this is ridiculous. Like you guys need to do something about this because this is three days now I've been telling you guys about a leak in my room and it's still not fixed. It was quite uncomfortable to be honest because the leak was literally right against the sink. So it's like, I'll be standing there washing my face, brushing my teeth, doing my makeup, whatever the case may be. And there's water literally falling, literally on me. And that's how I noticed it the first time because it fell on me. And I'm like, ew, <laughs> like where's this dirty water coming from, you know? So anyways, I was like, it's quite uncomfortable and you guys need to do something about it. 
they made me check out of my room to be able to provide me with another room. They wanted me to bring my things back to the lobby to leave them in the lobby, therefore, you know, they can get me another room. But I'm like, you know, I'm, I've been in my hotel room for like two days now. Obviously, my things aren't all in my suitcase. So now it's like I had to pack my things up to go and check out. Luckily, my friends were on the same floor that I was. So I didn't bring my things back to the lobby. I ended up just bringing my things to my friend's room. So continuing on in the room, the bed was trash. At least my bed was trash. One day I was getting on the bed and something scratched me on my leg. So I started poking around like, you know, what's going on? Like, what is this? And I realized that, you know, after I lifted up the linen to expose what it was, I realized that it was a broken coil that was exposed and it scratched me. So then I ended up just like, you know, putting like a little tape over it because by this time, you know, the leak was happening and I was waiting to get a new room. So I was like, I'm done. I'm over this. <laughs> so... I went off the property on day three to go just to walk along and explore a little bit of, you know, the local area. When I came back, they got me a new room. The new room was located on the fourth floor. And this is when I noticed that there was an elevator, but there was a signage on the elevator saying that it was broken. And I remember coming in and, you know, just looking, I think there was a, I, I want to say there is like four levels on the resort. And I remember thinking, I'm like, there's got to be an elevator, but I wonder where the elevator is. I was originally on the second floor, which I was right by the staircase that led you right into the lobby. So I didn't really need an elevator, but I remember thinking there has to be an elevator. Where is the elevator? And this is when I discovered that there is in fact an elevator, but it was broken. And the fact that I was now on the fourth floor, every time I needed to go up and down, I was like, now I got to climb all these stairs because I got a broken elevator. <laughs> and I remember even with my bags, like I remember saying to her and I was like, so now you want me to check out of my room and bring my things all the way to the lobby. She's like, oh, you know, we have a butler. The butlers can help you. It was this inconvenience. Outside of the room, one night we went to the snack bar. We're sitting there and sure enough comes flying this big old cockroach. <laughs> okay, literally, I kid you not. This big old cockroach came flying. I literally had to say to my daughter, don't look because if she saw it, she would have freaked right out. Okay? In addition to the insects, I remember one day going down the stairs and seeing like a dead cockroach on the stairs and I thought, huh, they got cockroaches here. But I was like, okay, as long as, um, you know, I'm not traveling with them, they're not coming in my bags, <laughs> I'm good. As long as they're not getting in my food, okay, whatever, at least it's dead. So I know they're doing something to kill them, okay? So I was like, okay, whatever. Um, on the subject of snack bar and food, the snack bar had really good chicken wings. Like, I remember my friends, you know, my friends and I sitting at the table and we were just ordering chicken wings because they were really good. That was like the best thing on the menu. They had jerk chicken. Um, the jerk chicken was okay. It was okay. It's not great. It was not great. It was just okay. They had jerk pork. I tried to jerk pork, did not like it. It, it took so long to come, to be honest. And then it came and it was dry. It was bland. And I was like, this is what I waited for. This is what I waited for. But okay. At the bar, you know, they had quite a bit of option. The bartenders, they were really friendly. That's one thing I'm gonna give them. Majority of the staff that I encountered, they were very helpful, they were very nice. Uh, I remember being at the souk restaurant. I can't remember exactly what it was, but the customer service at the souk restaurant was not great. But majority of the staff that we encountered, they were all very lovely, they were all very friendly, they were all very helpful. So at the bar, you know, um, drink options, they were okay. I found the drinks, the alcohol to be quite weak. Personally, I don't drink a lot. So therefore when I do drink, you know, I'm expecting to taste the alcohol and for it to be very strong. And I wasn't getting that. So I was like, hmm, this alcohol is cheap and weak. <laughs> it is very diluted, whatever they did to it. It ain't it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so as I mentioned, I stayed there for four days and three nights. 
The first day I got there, it wasn't time for lunch, but we didn't have lunch there at the buffet because we didn't need to. We stopped at KFC en route to the hotel, so we were good for lunch. Dinner we had there that night, and I must tell you, that was the best food I had on the resort that very first night. The next morning, um, I cannot remember if we had breakfast. I think we did. I remember there being only one morning we had breakfast at the buffet on the Montego Beach side, but I can't remember if it was the second morning or the third morning. We did not have lunch there on the second day, on the second day, this is where we went to the souk restaurant. The food was trash, okay? The food was disgusting. Let's just put it that way. I had a jerk chicken something. It was sweet. The chicken tasted artificial. My daughter had a seafood medley. It was disgusting. The flavor profiles were just trash. The seafood tasted like gummy and chewy. Like, you know those artificially flour-made seafood? Like, it was disgusting. There was only one person at the table that actually verbalized enjoying her meal and i was like that's good at least you got something good to eat you know and um when we got to dessert i had some kind of red velvet cake okay i i it wasn't giving anything red velvet it wasn't even giving vanilla cake with red food dye i don't know what it was giving but it it didn't taste good I can't remember if it was my friend or my daughter that got the cheesecake. The cheesecake tasted like condensed milk. I don't know if you remember hearing us joking about the cheesecake tasting like condensed milk, but I was like, it was as far as you can get from a cheesecake. That wasn't it. The third day, we also did not have lunch on the property because that's the day we wandered off to go and just explore the local area. The third night, we also did not have dinner on the property. My fourth morning was when my friend, one of my friends and I, we went over to their Cornwall side to be able to try out their buffet. So from my understanding, you know, if you're a guest on the Montego Beach side, you're able to dine at the restaurants on the Cornwall side. You just have to make reservations. You can't do it in advance. You have to go the same day you're trying to go over there at a specific time, whatever. So anyways, we booked this reservation for breakfast and we went over there. So after breakfast, I was standing there just, you know, checking out the scenery and I saw some suits. You can tell when people are in positions because, you know, they weren't dressed fancy or anything, but they were dressed up enough for me to know that they were in some type of management position. So I kind of observed what was, you know, happening and I waited for an opportunity to go and approach them. So I went over there and I was like, you know, excuse me, I'm staying at, you know, the Montego Beach side. I've experienced a leak in my room. Just kind of giving her the rundown of my experiences there. And she was like, oh yeah, you know, she was apologetic. She's like, oh, I heard about the leak because I'm assuming they had like, you know, their bed meeting or whatever it is that they do. And it came up that there was a leak in one of the guest room, which was mine. <laughs> so anyways, she was apologetic and she was like, oh, you know, I can offer you a Royal Decameron um, t-shirt. She's like, oh, they're super cute. You can get it from the gift shop. And I was like, okay, cool. So, I mean, I didn't quite understand what the Royal Decameron shirt meant. I got to the gift shop on the Montego Beach side and it was closed. There was a signage on the door that said if I needed access to the gift shop, I had to go over to the Cornwall side. So I had to walk back over there to go and explore to see what my options were. I got there and the lady in the gift shop had no idea that I was supposed to be getting some free merchandise. So I was like, okay, you know what, whatever, like, I ain't got time for this, you know, um, let me just go on over. At this point in time, my parents were there. So <laughs> I was telling my mom about the whole debacle about, you know, the leak in my room and, you know, the gift shop situation that just happened. And my mom, like one thing, my mom does not play. Okay. My mom demanded that I got no t-shirt. She marched right into the hotel at the front desk and she was like, my daughter needs to get her shirt, you know? So right away they're calling and we headed back over to the Cornwall section to go and get the t-shirt. So this is when I realized that, you know, the Royal Decameron merch really was just branded Royal Decameron t-shirt. And I'm like, um, do I look like I want to be a walking billboard for you? Do I look like I want to be a walking billboard for you? 
Anyways, um, my daughter didn't want anything, so I was like, whatever, you know, my mom demanded it, I get it, whatever. They had, um, so I chose two tops. I'm like, I could wear them around my house because I'm definitely not wearing them outside to be like, hey, you know, check out the Royal de Cameron. No, I do not recommend this hotel, okay? If you're on a budget, there's other places that you can go, but this is not it. Um, so that's what they offered me in regards to my experiences there. All in all, I would probably give this hotel maybe a 1.5 or a 2 out of 5. Okay, this is how low I would rate it based on my experiences there. You know, I'm sure there's other people that have gone there and they've had like a great experience, but my experience was not it. You know, um, everyone's perceptions of a place is also going to be different. If you are going to go there, I would definitely say check out the Cornwall side, but do not go to the Montego Beach side, okay? Do not go over there because <laughs> it is trash. The best thing about this place is actually the views. I'm not going to lie, the views were beautiful. Another thing I should mention is it's about five minutes away from the Sangsters International Airport. So, you know, just being outside, you would constantly see planes or hear planes. So... If that's something that, you know, if you're looking for a relaxing vacation away from the noise, away from the traffic, this probably won't be the best location for you just because of the planes constantly coming in. Like literally maybe every 15 to 20 minutes, there was a plane landing in Jamaica. So there's people coming to Jamaica to enjoy my beautiful island. <laughs> Um, in terms of accessibility, it's very accessible to a lot of like local um, areas. So for example, there's, it's, I think I want to say it was about 15. So when my friends and I, we walked out on the, like we walked out on the hip strip, it probably took us about like 15 minutes to walk up to Margaritaville. Right, so if you're going to Margaritaville or something like that, then and you have some form of transportation, it might be like a five minute drive. Um, there was also like another local club, I think I can't remember exactly what it's called, like I don't club, so I wasn't interested. But I want to say there's another local hip club, <laughs> if hip is the right word, <laughs> there was another local club that um, somebody mentioned that was really good. On the subject of clubs, there's also a club that is on the property it's called glitters um it doesn't really get advertised or anything one night my friend and i happened to you know um stumble upon it and there was like nobody in it so you know if that's your thing that is something that they have if you're looking for good music i guess and you don't want to be off the resort that's also another amenity that they offer but all in all, like I said, this resort gets a 1.5 to 2 stars in my opinion. Out of 5, I do not recommend it. But if you do choose to book it, book it at your own risk. Comment down below and let me know if this is somewhere that you stayed at and what was your experience like. Also, comment down below and let me know if you stayed at any other resort and you had a similar experience because I'll make note to put it on my list of places to avoid. Thanks for watching and I hope that you found this video valuable.